Hi everyone, uh, welcome to another video in my channel. As uh, some of you know, I did a direct PhD from the Indian Institute of Science <coughs> in the sense that I joined for my PhD after my bachelor's. I completed my bachelor's in electronics and communication engineering, then worked for about four years plus an additional year of uh, a break in between and, and then joined for my PhD degree. But I joined for a PhD degree, uh, not a, a master's and then a PhD degree. So essentially, I started my PhD without having a master's in hand. At the end of it, I got a PhD degree and an MTech research degree, which was not the initial idea. Initial idea was I would get only a PhD degree. So that was good. Uh, this video is not about that story of mine. But then uh, several people have reached out to me in online and offline modes, uh, asking about the so-called advantages and disadvantages between a direct PhD and a regular PhD. And that's when I realized that uh, there is a significant misunderstanding or a lack of information about the different modes of uh, PhD entry, at least in India. So today I'm going to talk about quickly what are the different types of PhD modes of admission in India. So to start off is the regular PhD, which most of you might be aware. This is the traditional PhD uh, entry mode where you do a bachelor's degree, let's say in bachelor's in engineering or even the sciences, then your master's degree MTech, and then you go for a PhD degree. Uh, when it comes to admission for this, most often, this is something that many people are not aware, most often in at least the IITs, IISC and even NITs, uh, if you have a master's degree, that is considered as a metric for shortlisting you for interview, not really gate score. So based on your master's degree, mostly the percentage of your master's degree, not really from where you did to, took the master's degree, but the percentage of marks that you, uh, that you got, uh, they shortlist you for an interview. And then based on your performance in the interview process and your alignment with the uh, research um, 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 area of the supervisor as well as your interests and how you perform and your master's degree score, uh, you get um, shortlisted for a, a PhD degree. So then that's the regular PhD mode. You, have, you do a bachelor's, you do a master's degree, you apply, you get shortlisted, you go through an interview or a selection process which might include a written test as well based on your performance in the interviews as well as your alignment with the research ideas or research areas of the people taking admission during that cycle, you get an offer. So this is a regular PhD degree. And the other one is, another mode is the direct PhD degree uh, where uh, based on your bachelor's degree itself, you can get admission to a PhD program. This is for people who either are quite clear that they eventually want to do a PhD degree, so they don't want to kind of waste time doing a master's degree of two years. And also for people who, like me, who got into the idea of getting into academia or doing research after spending quite a, quite a bit of time in the industry, so they don't want to spend more time doing getting a master's degree and then directly into research. So the motivators can be different. So uh, the mode of entry for this is two types. One is if you are a person who got a bachelor's degree from a centrally funded technical institute, CFTI, which is like the NITs, IITs and other institutes. And if you have a GPA of let's say 8 or 7.4 or 8.5, depending on the institute taking that mission, based on your GPA score, you can apply and you can get directly shortlisted for the interview or the selection process and go through the process that is usually done for the regular PhDs as well. And the other other method but th there are some riders here because the the candidate should have graduated like let's say within the last three years etc though i am i did my bachelor's from a centrally funded technical institute i did not uh, qualify that three year criterion because i had applied for the phd admission almost five years after i graduated so i i, I use the second mode which is gate so you can write gate and uh, based on your gate score you can apply to, to direct phd programs across institutes in the country, IAC, IITs, and based on the number of applications and the number of seats they have, they will set a cutoff. This usually, this cutoff is usually lower than the MTech cutoffs, that's another input. And uh, based on this cutoff, uh, you get called for interviews and selection process, and the regular process is resumed. And based on the institute, uh, most often it is that you get a PhD degree at the end of your course. However, when you do a direct PhD, some course, some institutes like IIC mandate that you need to do much more number of courses, let's say 24 credits instead of 12 credits for regular PhDs, more number of courses uh, to sit for the comprehensive examination. I have done a video of comprehensive examination earlier, which happens two years, roughly two years after you start your PhD degree. So some institutes uh, 
what they do is when the students actually do this 24 credits and are also doing phd they kind of satisfy the requirements for the award of an mtech degree as well so some institutes for the benefit of the students for them applying for faculty positions let's say in state government institutions where the master's degree is mandatory they give an additional mtech degree as well but dated on the same day as you get the phd degree so when you con when you get convocated or when you attend convocation to get your degree you get both your phd degree and your master's degree which is usually an mtech research or ms research or an ms degree not really an mtech degree so that's what i got i got an mtech research degree and a phd degree with dated on the same day which was in 2022 so that's the whole story of direct phd so you have direct phd you have regular phd so now we have talk, talked about direct phd and regular phd what are the advantages and disadvantages between these two modes uh, i wouldn't even say it's as advantages and disadvantages because it's all about people's preferences but still i would get into some details of it but in an another video because otherwise this will get a very get to be a very long video so that's for another day another topic so now th these are two modes right there are still many more many more modes the third one is a much more uh, conventional method it's called the integrated phd degree here it's already laid out very clearly when you start your phd that you will be getting a masters degree and here also there are two ways this is there's an integrated phd done for science students people who do bsc in let's say physics chemistry bsc honors in biology chemistry physics etc they there is a program in iisc which is an int phd program or the integrated phd program where you are selected through gate uh, kvpy uh, it's not kvpy uh, uh, csir exams several exams are there that you can write and uh, based on that you get selected so here the idea is that first two years you clearly dedicate yourself to the masters program and you even have a short project for your masters thesis you defend that thesis for masters so that means that you have cleared your requirements for the masters degree but you don't get the masters degree immediately however the date which you when you give the defense for the masters is noted down and then you get into the phd and then you spend another 4 5 or 6 years to do your phd so it's clear easily a 6 to 7 year affair you do your masters in the initial 2 years and then you do your phd between 3.5 to 5 years depending on the field and the uh, the the domain and the uh, engineering or science all those factors so same way there are courses across other iits for example if you take iit madras they have an ms phd program where the same thing happens you do a two year ms degree you you kind of do a small thesis which might pan out to be your phd research as well later on but it's a smaller uh, part of that is done as your masters thesis you defend that the date is noted and then you go into your phd and you complete your phd you get your masters degree only when you get your phd degree however that masters degree will be dated on the day you gave your masters defense which would be roughly around 4 years back so that's the difference between a direct phd and an integrated phd please note this point very clearly in integrated phd there it's very clearly defined that you do there is a duration for masters degree and then there is a duration for phd degree and that the time when you complete a master's degree is noted and based on that date you are given a master's degree when you get your phd degree at the end of the whole course so this is the difference between integrated and direct phd and direct phd in some institutes they just give you a phd degree some institutes might end up giving you a master's degree as well based on the number of courses you do so now we have seen regular phd direct phd integrated phd degree still there are a few more types so then you have you might have heard uh, about isro lot of isro scientists who have done sponsored uh, phd from top institutes like iisc iit madras iit bombay etc there are also people working in the industry in bangalore and elsewhere who get sponsored by their companies uh, for their own internal skill building based on some kind of agreement that uh, you can go for a phd but once you complete you have to spend 3 to 4 years with us so that's kind of like a agreement between the company and the employee either a government company go or a government purely government employee or a purely like private company all three of them like when i say government company it means like the public sector undertaking like undertakings like uh, hal bel etc then you have drdo isro etc and then you have companies itself like um, let's say comsol nvidia whoever i'm not sure if these companies have programs i'm just giving an example so so long as the companies are okay with their uh, employees going in for a phd and they feel that they are going to bring in additional skills once they come back with a phd they can sponsor 
the PhD. So this is called the sponsored PhD and it has different names in different institutes. In IAS it is called the ERP program or the external registration program. What it means is you, up, you register as an external candidate because you do not go through the indeed there will still be a selection process of some interviews etc. However, you do not go through the formal application process of the other PhD students uh, by applying writing gate or having master's degree etc. Though master's degree might be a requirement, it is a separate entry mode called ERP and the objective of that mode is to not really uh, expose you to research and open the horizons for you to do explore a lot of topics but rather skill development of employees who are already a full time employee in an organization. Let us say ISRO wants to uh, equip uh, a scientist with some ad more advanced uh, uh, methodologies about satellite guidance or maneuvering or let us say avionics which is happening currently. They ask, they ask them to go do a PhD and come back so that their internal capacity building happens. So that is ERP. So that is the fourth type of program. So we have seen regular PhD, we have seen di direct PhD which I did. You have integrated PhD uh, like MS PhD or INT PhD. Then you have ERP candidates which are external registration program and the fifth category is called the QIP program or the quality improvement program. So this is specifically created by the government of India uh, to uh, upskill the faculties in the uh, tier 2 uh, institutes, tier 2 and lower institutes in the country such as NITs, uh, the state government institutions, state private institutions, engineering colleges etc. where the candidates can apply for a quality improvement program because there are a lot of uh, colleges or engineering institutes in the country where still uh, there are people who are faculties but who do not have a PhD degree. Ideally, the, law, the, the, the idea of the University Grants Commission uh, generally or the AICTE is that uh, faculties should have a PhD degree but we are just moving towards that. Though all faculties in central institutes like uh, IITs and IICs have, will have a PhD degree but there are still uh, some, some faculties in NITs and many faculties in state government institutions who get into a faculty position, let us say state government institutions, they get into a faculty position by writing the PSC public sector, uh, public service commission exams in those states. So it is a matter of eventually uh, in a temporal basis as a vision to upskill them. So that is the QIP program where these candidates after getting approval from their institutes and their government can apply to a central quality improvement program admission process then they can give a choice which institutes do they want to go to which professors do they want to go to which field do they want to work in and there is a separate dedicated um, selection process for it uh, for the QIP candidates and they get or uh, they also get interviewed and based on their performance and based on their preference list they get offered the institutes let us say they give preference that first preference is IIT Madras second is IIC third is IIT Bombay based on their preference and their um, and their uh, performance and the availability of funding uh, they get allotted an institute. The, the thing that the rider here is that usually QIP uh, faculties are sent on a paid paid uh, QIP program uh, for a period of 3 years. They need to complete most of the formalities of their PhD within 3 years. In case they are not able to, they usually go back and join their jobs. They start teaching again and on as a part time basis they try to do their work, complete their work and submit their thesis. Some people finish it in 3 years, some people take 4, 5 or even 8, 9 years because they are busy with their work as well. But it is an interesting program which has helped lot of faculties in the country uh, get a degree, PhD degree and uh, upskill themselves to impart their knowledge to the students at the grassroots. So that is also a very, uh, very uh, visionary program by Government of India which has been around for several decades actually. So this is the QIP program. Uh, another aspect of the QIP is that uh, some cases, uh, I am not fully aware of this, we, I need to check it, but the fees for the program is paid by the candidate, uh, but, the f but, they're, but, they're, uh, but they are still full time paid employees, so their f fees will still come from the, from the government for 3 years. After that they might have to take an unpaid leave if they want to do some more work at the institute, they usually take a loss of pay leave, try to do more work and then get back and join their job. Th those are some formalities of the QIP program, I am not getting into that. So basically 5 types, uh, regular, direct, integrated, ERP and QIP. Now a 6th category which is not very common in IITs and IAC but quite common in other institutes 
maybe even NITs and state government institutions is the uh, part-time PhD program. This is because uh, there are a lot of people who are at different points in their career. Uh, their idea of getting a PhD might be different. Some people uh, are just doing it to upskill themselves. Some people are doing it to learn a specific skill. They might already be um, a, reg a regular employee for many decades in a company. Uh, some people would want to teach better uh, their students after understanding some core concepts in a better way. So different people have different ideas of doing a PhD. So a part-time PhD is another mode in the sense that you you, uh, you you do a residential program at the institute just to complete the mandatory courses for the PhD degree and then you kind of work in the evenings after work or in the weekends and try to find time to do your research and eventually try to do your research uh, in a span of like four, five, six years. Uh, and a, on a part-time manner and then submit your thesis. That's a part-time PhD, which is not very common in IITs, but still a mode. So these are the different modes of PhD. And uh, this is specific to India. The cases are very different in Europe and in the US. Uh, I will come to that in a later video because it's already, I think, more than 20 minutes now. So I hope I gave a good idea of the different modes of entry for a PhD program. And uh, I wouldn't uh, call any of this as better or worse or more advantages or less advantages it depends on what you want out of a phd degree what time you have to do a phd degree what financial bag um, what is your financial status can you even dedicate five years of life uh, considering your uh, family situation personal situation uh, based on all these factors you can decide what kind of phd mode you want to enter and you can do it i hope this was useful and cleared at least some of your doubts see you in my next video bye bye